Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, my name's Rob from robnonphoto.com and in this video we're going to have a quick look at some advanced editing techniques in Google's free photo editing and organizing software. Uh, Picasa version 3.9. If you're a user of Picasa, you might see these things and they uh, uh, might be a bit of an eye opener and it might be a way of doing things that you haven't tried before. Um, if you're new to Picasa or you haven't even tried it yet, it might encourage you to download the free software and give it a go. So, without further ado, let's dive into Picasa and see what I'm actually, uh, actually talking about. So, here we go. So I've opened up Picasa and I've opened up um, uh, a folder of recent photographs I've taken and normally what would happen is we would go in to say this photo and then I could start doing my edits, I don't know, add a black and white, that sort of thing, which is all very nice, isn't it? But what you can also do to make this process um, uh, a little bit more... Um, Comparative, should we say, is that if up here in, in near the, the middle on the top right hand side you might see this AA button, A, B and A. A just means we have the image you're looking at. A, B means we can compare two similar images, which I'll talk about in a minute. But A, A means we can compare the same image, image twice. So what we can then do is by clicking on each photo, which is the same one, different version of each one, we can then choose to edit on um, a different one. <coughs> Excuse me. So, for example, we could just choose to work on this one and keep this as the original. So now I could say, right, all right, let's um, let's try. Uh, I'm feeling lucky. See what that does. Right, yeah. So okay. Um, what I want to do now. So I want to bump up the shadows oh, a little bit too much, uh, but I'll tell you what, let's go in, let's um, let's boost it up, the boost to really increase the contrast. That's too strong. Let's knock it back. And all the time, I can, can we compare this to the version on the right? And now I can say, oh, actually, no, I, I want it black and white. Ooh. Um, let's uh, apply that change right now. Let's go in and let's do a filtered black and white on it. Let's choose I don't know, the red filter. Yes, I you know I really like that. And then as you can see, you know I've got my black and white conversion on the left, and I've got my Im original image on the right. Um, and so you know I could be happy there, and then I could think, oh, actually I tell you what, I like the black and white, but I really wouldn't mind having a nice colourful version as well. Um, so what am I going to do? I tell you what, let's um. Let's bump up the highlights and the fill light. Let's make it nice and bright. Let's go in and pump up the, I don't know, let's pump up the saturation a bit. Because it's a bit of a grey day. I quite like that. And now let's give it a bit of a Lomo look. Like that. So now I've got two different versions of the same photograph where I've applied different edits. We've got our black and white conversion on the left. And we've got our color version on the right. And so, you know, you could choose between the two. Um, you can go backwards and forwards. Um, and it's a really great way of comparing two photos. Very, very simple. Well, the same photo with two different edits. Or just keeping one of its original. So you've got, like, the baseline that you're working from. Um, and then when we go on, we can then, you know, it says the same images has two different edits. Which one would you like to keep? So I don't know. I think I prefer the one on the left. So I'll choose to keep that one. Fabulous. So that's one way of doing it. Now the other thing you can do as well, if we compare the same image, um, you can also change the way that it stacks. Obviously, for depending on, let's see if we can get to a horizontal image. Here we go. So if we select that one, um, we might want to stack them. Oh, sorry. Select that one and go AA. So they're both um, landscape view, aren't they? So we would want to look at them maybe like that. And you could change that around, which is um, really, really good. <coughs> the other thing you can use with this side-by-side -side editing would be if you can, if you go back, let's see, uh, in fact, let's go back to a single photo. Say these two photos here, where I've got these two photos of this rigid radar. I could choose to compare both of them and just have a good look at them um, because they're almost the same they're almost taken from the same viewpoint 
but just not quite and I could choose to zoom in you know and check the focus of different points and actually what you can see here is actually the focus that the photo on the right actually has a little bit of sharper focus around the, the steering wheel and so that could be a, that's a very useful way of looking at things too. So you're actually co comparing almost the same photograph when you're trying to choose which is the one that you might really like. So you might actually say, yeah, actually I really like that one, and you might add a star to that one. So when you come to do your to do your edit, um, you can uh, you can do it that way as well. Now another kind of advanced photo tip that you can do is let's go back to the library and have a look. Let's say um, with my uh, black and white photo here, black and white image here of the field gun in front of the tree. Let's say I really enjoyed that edit and I thought I love the way I've edited that, I love the colour but what I really want to do is I want to apply the same things I've done to that particular photo there to say the photo of the rigid radar. Well no problem, I can just click on the photo, go up to edit, copy all effects click on my rigid radar and now I can I can right click can I um, no you go up here again edit paste all effects Ta -da! now my rigid radar now has all the effects that was previously on the field gun picture and I can roll them back if I want and go through them and maybe change them a little bit how powerful is that nice and easy just like if you were in Photoshop and you were say copying the layers palette you know with adjustment layers and things you could do that as well and you know and you can do that to as many photos as you want so I could come down and say I really like that but I want to apply it to let's say uh, let's find a, a group of photos these three photos here so I could control click on all of these and then edit paste all effects Dunk and they've all gone to black and white, nice and easy, and then I could go in and change each individual photo. Now, at first you might think, oh that's a nice feature, you know, but how, I, where, where can I really use it? Well, imagine you were out and about, um, and say, I don't know, a wedding shoot, or shooting some interiors or something, where uh, you've got the white balance slightly wrong, or maybe you hadn't got the white balance slightly wrong, but the white balance was slightly off, by the same amount because you're in the same situation. Let's imagine we're in, I don't know, we're, we're at a wedding, we're at the reception, we're just taking photos inside the reception, but the uh, lights that are in there mean that um, the colour's slightly off. And so what you could then do, I mean, is you could then go into one of the photos and just correct the colour, and you would do that in uh, Picasso just by going to the neutral colour picker button and saying, well, actually, that's white there that would then adjust the so you get the right color balance and then what you could de then do is copy that edit off that particular photo copy all effects and then you could then apply that to all the photos that were taken in the same situation and that would then color balance to, to what you wanted to do all those photos in an instant this is a really powerful tool and kind of brings Picasso up there with the likes of Lightroom and Photoshop and the fact that you can use it you know, for, for situations where you've got lots and lots of photographs that have been taken in a similar situation, which then you've got to do a simple edit for, and it can um, it can really help. You know, it could be as simple as with your particular camera, you always like to add a little bit of contrast to all the photos, so you could just change one of them and then copy that effect to all the others. Now, you do have to be quite careful with copying effects, because as I said, uh, let's take um, that's probably a bad example. Let's go to a different photo. Let's go down to something maybe a little bit more interesting. Um, I don't. Let's say this pic, this picture of this building here. Remember that with Picasso, as you apply edits, you apply one after the other, and then you can only roll them back one at a time as well. So it's like you're building up this this pile of um, acetates on top of your image, just like you would in Photoshop with layers. But you can only change or remove the last one you've done and then then go back through this layer of acetates there so what that means is if you've got a lot of images and you're going to be applying the same edit to lots of them the certain things you don't want to do first you know you you want to leave until the last ones and one of the classic ones is that lots of people do and I do it myself to be honest one of the first things I'll often do with a photo is I'll go in 
and I'll perhaps straighten it just to make sure it's um, it's how I want it. But if you're going to be editing a lot of photos, you don't want to be cropping because when you copy effects, um, it will copy that crop as well. And if the crop is the first thing you've done, you'll have to undo everything else before you can get to the crop, and it kind of negates the reason for um, for having uh, copying all those effects. So instead of that, what you would probably do, what I would recommend you do, is the first thing you would do is you would go in and uh, Excuse me. Sort out the colour with your neutral colour picker. Um, actually, I'm not too fond of that. I don't think that's very good. Let's go back and do it to say somewhere like um, let's take it off. Zoom in a bit. Something like that. Okay. So uh, you know, I might want to correct colour. And then I might want to, you know, boost up my shadows, muck around my highlights, add a little bit of fill light, um, add any filters that I wanted to do to make to get the to get the images the way I want to. And then you would then copy that effect to all the other photos that were similar that you wanted the similar effect to, and apply your crop and your straighten uh, at the end. So I could then go right. Well, let's straighten the photo. Whatever. Yeah, I'm just doing this very quickly, and then you know, let's apply, you know, a crop. Let's keep the current ratio. Do it that way. You know, I'm, I'm just doing this a bit fast, but and applying that that way. So there we go. So when you are going to be applying um, uh, effects or edits across a large number of photos within Picasso, just remember leave things like rotating and cropping to the last. And don't copy those to all the other photos. Now remember, it's not at the end of the, it's not the end of the world if you do, because as long as you've done it as the last thing, you can just go into those photos and you can you can kind of undo um, undo uh, what you did uh, like uh, like that nice and uh, nice and easily. Right, so there we go. So we've covered some quite advanced settings there. Actually, I'll show you another couple of things. Actually, one thing that people often get criticized for is pixel peeping which is where you look very closely at a photo um, but it can be helpful because it help, helps you to see uh, the level of focus or level of sharpness you might have achieved in pixel photos and Picasso is very good at that so down here underneath the photo you see the little square the one-to-one -one. if you click on the one-to-one -one, that zooms you into a hundred percent so you can have so you can have a good look around your photo and you can look for blemishes dust spots uh, maybe where something wasn't in focus or anything like that. And then when you want to go back to the full screen, just click that. Um, or you've got a slider. Um, but remember, with a slider, you can slide past the 100%. And as soon as you start getting past 100%, any camera, no matter how good it is, um, the image will start to degrade. And then we can go back that way. Right, let's go back to the library. So, you know, we said about this edit. So if I wanted to do it now, I could just go edit, copy all effects, and then I could apply those effects, edit paste all effects to this particular photo of the beach huts we could then go in and go all right well I don't want to do that straightening because it didn't straighten it how I wanted to so that will undo that effect there and I guess so actually I don't like that Lomo filter I can undo that and do it that way right so hopefully with these little hints and tips I've shown you some sort of side-by-side -side editing how to compare different uh, edits of the same photo how to compare uh, slightly different photos so you can pick the best one and how to apply global edits across as many photos as you want um, especially useful for when you're applying um, white balance and um, color uh, corrections to uh, what you what you want to do right so um, ooh, let's cancel that so there we go that's um, advanced editing in um, in Google's Picasso my name is Rob from robnofo.com thanks for watching